It's a conflict that you may not know much about, yet it's been happening on and off for decades. Armenia and Azerbaijan, two former Soviet territories, have been locked in conflict for 32 years over a piece of disputed territory. There was a stalemate until recently, and now there's a chance that world powers may be thrust into this crisis that has already resulted in hundreds of deaths. Patrick Rival is on the ground there and brings us this report. A decades-old conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia reignited. This is what life has been like in Nagorno-Karabakh's capital, Stepanakert, for more than a week. Air raid sirens and near-constant bombardment. Armenia and Azerbaijan are fighting a large-scale war along the borders of the disputed region. Now a flashpoint that risks triggering a larger international crisis. Let them stop this war. I don't want my son to be fighting there. I want all mothers to have their sons return to them. I ask everyone, help us. The military conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh is one of the world's oldest. The mountainous region is claimed by both Armenians and Azerbaijanis. As the Soviet Union collapsed in the late 1980s, ethnic Armenians living in Nagorno-Karabakh sought to join the new Armenian state. The resulting six-year war killed over 20,000 people and displaced hundreds of thousands. Despite a ceasefire brokered by Russia in 1994, the conflict was never resolved. Nagorno-Karabakh is now populated and controlled by Armenians, but is internationally still recognized as Azerbaijani territory. For 30 years, the conflict has regularly flared up. But there's been no fighting like this since the 1990s. Nearly two weeks ago, Azerbaijan launched a major offensive and has said it wants to force Armenia to withdraw entirely from Nagorno-Karabakh. This is unique and this is very large in scale. We never had, like, since 1994, this is the first time we have a war with this large, like, scale. Already hundreds of troops and dozens of civilians have been killed. Right now, only one road is open to Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenia's capital, Yerevan. Driving into the mountains, signs of the war come towards us. As we're driving closer to Nagorno-Karabakh, we keep seeing ambulances coming past us. They're all coming from the front with the wounded. Getting closer to the border, we meet a group of men in new cars. They're donating them to the war effort. It's for our motherland. We're giving these cars to our friends so that they can use these cars, use them in wartime, to carry the wounded, to bring food to those places that need it. The war has triggered a huge mobilization among Armenians, people signing up to fight, donating food, money and basic necessities. And there is a need for them. So far, fighting is largely confined to Nagorno-Karabakh and nearby areas, but Azerbaijan is indiscriminately bombarding the enclave. Nuna Gabrielian fled her town four days ago with nine grandchildren. Their home now is this kindergarten, along with seven adults. This is our bedroom. They sleep in the same room and eat in the classroom. All of them, the bigger ones, this is already the second time they've seen this. I appeal to the world. I ask you to stop it. It's enough. I've already seen war three times. I can't do this. I don't know where else to turn to, where I can hide these children so they don't see this bombing. Hundreds of people forced to flee are living in hotels in this town. Armenian forces have retaliated, striking cities in Azerbaijan. The United States, Russia and France have called for an immediate ceasefire. But that is complicated by a new factor in the conflict. Turkey is openly backing Azerbaijan far more aggressively than it has in the past. Syrian fighters from Turkish-backed rebel groups are now allegedly being sent to Azerbaijan to fight. Turkey and Azerbaijan deny that. But in this refugee camp in northern Syria, two fighters told ABC News they were recruited by Turkey. The Turkish government asked the Free Syrian Army to intervene in Azerbaijan. Our battalion was asked to provide 200 to 300 people to go to Azerbaijan. They told me I would earn a salary between $1,300 to $1,800. 
And then there's Russia, a formal military ally of Armenia, but it's supplying weapons to both sides. There are fears that the tangled geopolitics of this conflict could prolong the war, making it more bloody. For now, the goodbyes continue, families sending off their loved ones to fight once again. My younger son came home wounded, and now I'm sending my older son to war so that he can protect my motherland, our Armenians, so that we all can live calmly and well. Let those Azerbaijanis and Turks leave. They're killing them. You understand? In Armenia's capital, they're burying the dead and preparing to receive more casualties. They're digging fresh graves, three back hoes working at once. Patrick Revel in Yerevan, Armenia, for ABC News Live.